So this is an awesome group of people, just amazing. Um, we were missing one today, Elizabeth. They had to go to Kansas. Uh, of course, the Hobacks, which we love them. They have moved to Texas, but they did finish our class. Um, and Pat, Pat Mata, she was with us the whole time too, had some miracles occur in her life. Um, she has some surgery, so we've been praying for her healing. She is doing well, if you guys are wondering. She's going to have one more surgery, and we'll try to keep you guys up to date. They couldn't be here today, though. So um, so what is Rooted? In a nutshell, it's a 10-week course where you connect with God and your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a place where you can come broken and not have any fear, anxiety, embarrassment, guilt. A place where you won't be lied to and you won't have to lie. A place where you'll be encouraged to surrender to God and your brothers and sisters in Christ. We're going to, uh, it's a place where you'll, will help you along your journey because everyone has their own journey, everyone has their own story. So, so I've learned so much from this Rudy class. I wanted to share their wisdom uh, with the entire congregation. I asked them a simple question and I felt, when I got the answers, I was like, we, we got to get in front of everybody and talk about this because this is moving. This is awesome stuff. Um, so I said, are you guys okay with getting up in front of everybody and, and answering some questions? And they said, ah. <laughs> they said, sort of, okay, and yes. I said, you guys are going to bless some people with what you guys just said. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. So I want to ask you guys, who has the mic? Who's going to start first? Can we start with uh, your lovely wife? So I'm going to ask you guys to introduce yourself, and then we are going to do... The big question, the one I asked them was, 10 weeks ago I was, now I am. And you're going to hear some powerful things. So if you guys introduce yourselves and then give your answer to that question for me. Tammy? Yes. Hello. Okay. <laughs> I'm Tammy LaFleur. Um, started Rooted 10 weeks ago. What a great bunch of people. <laughs> said I wasn't going to do this. Um, ten weeks ago, I was an angry, angry girl, oh, going through some tough times, mistrustful. I was an emotional mess, was consumed with worry. Today, I'm healing. I'm full of God's joy and love, which I never thought I'd see. <laughs> I wake up talking to Papa, and I go to sleep talking to Papa. My name's Brandon. I'm very nervous. I'm <laughs> just kidding, not really. Uh, ten weeks ago, I was looking for a church family, people that I could call friends that love Christ, and actually I found it. It was delivered to me on day one. Uh, it was, it's great to be able to talk about Christ with people. It, for one, encouraged my heart, uh, and I just needed friends that, uh, that love him too. So, and I was blessed with that. Uh, and, uh, blessed my house, blessed my family, blessed my children. Praise the Lord. So my name is David Sather, Jr. Um, ten weeks ago, I was convinced I was connected to the church because I gave my time. I was jobless and sure I'd figure it all out solo. I was intensely focused on myself and fixedly praying for myself and my own problems. And ten weeks ago, I was covered in so many masks, I don't think I could see clearly through them. Uh, today, I'm just beginning to see the value of a genuine church community and the honesty between real dialogue. Um, t today, I'm in a new job, and I think I'm in working from a new heart, um, not so focused on myself. Uh, today, I'm actually focused outwardly on all these great people around me and seeing that the, the prayer for people around us kind of lets our own problems dissipate. Um, and today I feel like I'm becoming more myself just by being myself with other people and not hiding behind what I thought I was supposed to be. I'm Kayla Moore. Uh, ten weeks ago I was brand new, ready to take it all in, yet a little apprehensive. I was scared to pray, afraid of doing it wrong. I was nervous because I didn't know anything, an amateur. I was embarrassed for not knowing where to find the book of Mark in my Bible. Today, I am still new, still ready to take it in without abandon. 
I am praying without thinking, knowing there is no right or wrong. I have a church family today, a family I'm not embarrassed in front of. I'm still learning the Bible, but today I know where to find the book of Mark. How can I, like, come up after that? That's not fair. I'm Blythe Driver. Um, what was the question? <laughs> Ten weeks ago, I was perfect. I didn't need help. I was just trying to get my have a date night with my husband um, without the kids. And I had a babysitter offer, hey, I'll take the kids. And I was like, okay, I'll do this class. Um, I realized quickly that the walls I had up and um, what I thought was strength was intimidating to most people and today I am more aware and I'm working on being approachable and trying to be like Jesus and helping others and I'm um, softened my exterior and I hum- I'm humble I'm, I'm humbling myself I'm I'm still kind of perfect, though. (laughs) All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Dustin Driver. I'm I'm the husband. Uh, So uh, 10 weeks ago, I was unaware of how important it was to build the bridge between myself and God's love and how important my relationship with God truly was. Uh, Today... I'm developing and growing my relationship with God and opening myself to community, you know, this wonderful community and this church. I mean, it's been a true blessing to myself and my family. And the Rooted class just really, you know, it really set it in. I mean, it set the foundation of what's really important in life and the true values that the love of God can bring to us. So, yeah. I'm Matthew Enoff. Ten weeks ago, I was fighting God's pull. I spent most of my time trying to convince myself that I had to do things on my own and that there was no one here to help me. I was positive that if I couldn't do it, nobody else could. Today, I'm learning to let go of that feeling. I'm learning that without community, there's no path to God and there's no true happiness. You can't do anything on your own. Um, And my biggest challenge is learning I'm not on my own. Hi, um, I'm Vanessa Enos, the wife. (laughs) Um, Ten weeks ago, I was worthless, ashamed, lost, unloved, and just had no purpose to live. Today, I am found, cleaned, loved, and know I'm here for something because my Heavenly Father makes no mistakes. I'm Samantha Waller. Ten weeks ago, I was angry at myself because I'd lost a church family. I was alone, and I was broken, and I was just ridden with guilt, with mom guilt. And today, I am accepted and supported, regardless of my faults and failures as a mom, and I am now grace-filled. My name is Clayton Meads. Um, I've been part of this church for quite a while, so going into this class, I kind of thought I had it all figured out. thought I had a, a good foundational relationship with God, and now I sit here and know that he just continues to peel back layer upon layer and show me different things that I need to work on from my past, stuff that I thought I had worked out and figured out, and he just continues to show me that there's always a newness and there's always more. His love is never ending and he will continue no matter where you start to just pour into you and continue to love you through it all, no matter what. Thank you. Is that powerful stuff or what? Man, oh man, it almost makes you cry. So you guys, thank you so much for your courage. Um, I got a bunch of questions together that they've been working on for the last few weeks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just let whoever wants to answer this one answer it. What was the most profound thing that God revealed to you over the last 10 weeks? Who wants to do it? Who's got the courage? Brandon. (laughs) 
So at the beginning of this, we told them all, you guys have to pray in a group setting because that's scary, right? Praying, I don't pray right. I don't know how to pray. Well, there's no such thing as that. So every single one of these folks has prayed us in, they prayed us out, and they prayed over people over the last 10 weeks. Um, so that took a lot of courage, but they were all able to do it, and they all did it really, really well. So um, I think that was something that I always am, you know, that's scary to do. So if you can get everybody to do that and have the courage to do that, it's, it's a pretty profound thing. So go ahead, Brandon. Uh, <clears throat> well, the most profound thing that I think I've experienced in this class was actually experiencing God actively working in my life. Like what you were saying, Vanessa, I was lost, needed answers. Uh, and whenever I prayed, I prayed continually, and I was actually expecting answers. And uh, as he answered, that was the experience that I was looking for in God, was that he answered my, answered my prayers with the answers that, that meant something that actually would cause change in my life. You know, because uh, trying to change it by myself, I couldn't do it. I tried it over and over again, struggled with addiction, struggled with violence, uh, and just kind of looking for people to to be nice with, you know, and to be kind with, you know, because the rest, it seemed like everybody I surrounded myself with outside and up to the age of 30, and I'm 40 now, uh, was just, uh, it was all worldly, and that's what I kind of come to understand is that, there are kind people out there, but we don't have to hide because of the kindness, you know, always looking for some way to bless somebody or some way to talk to somebody, some way to lend a helping hand. And I kind of lost that uh, there for a while. And in this rooted class, I was able to come back to terms with that. And I repented to Jesus Christ and he has saved me from that, uh, redirecting my life. And I can just see the experiencing of God changing the way that I walk and the way that I talk and the way that I treat people. And so that's what I got out of this class. And it's um, I would have to say something similar for me, like the way God showed himself for me throughout the whole experience was just um, through the power of prayer. Um, week in and week out, we were praying constantly and every single person had some sort of hardship or some sort of demon they were fighting with and we would pray and pray and at the end it w even throughout the whole time it was just amazing to see God work and like it was mi miraculous like he would show himself and like it it just everything would happen there where things would be good and it was just great to see by the end of it People were getting jobs that were needing jobs. People were getting healthy that were needing to be healthy. And it was just amazing to see that power of prayer work throughout our group. And it was just, that was the best part to me to see. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on. Davey, I'm going to put you on the spot. Did you answer that question? There you go. I just got to at least echo the the whole power of prayer between this group. It was like week after week. It was just testimonies on how the prayers that we all submitted to the whole group were just being answered. And for me, it was, you know, I used to just pray for myself and my own problems, like how rough I thought I had it. And it was like when suddenly your perspectives face towards all these other great people and their stories. It's like, honestly, I probably wasn't even interested in most of the church people's like stories until like you get to hear them and you're like, wow. Like you, your life is worth hearing about. And like, I want to actually pray for you and, and see what, what happens. And it was like week after week after week, it was like people's prayers being answered. <laughs> and it's like something about us being able to, like, I, I believe that God's listening and answering my prayers often, but when I'm praying for somebody else, it's like not even a question in my mind. Like I just, I, I submit it to him and I assume that he's taking care of the rest and I can like go on about my day. And, and it seems like there's a difference when, I'm praying for somebody else versus praying for myself. Thank you, Davey. Anybody else want to take that one? You're staring right at me. You want to do it, don't you? You don't want to answer that one? I'm not going to force you to do it. So, um, 
yeah, they prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and you can never pray enough um, all week long. It's not just um, for you folks that are thinking about doing this. I encourage you to do it, and I'll give you the information as we finish, but it's not just Tuesday night. Now, we spent, we'd spend two and a half hours together, and I'd say, all right, is everybody ready to go? And they'd be like, no, we're not ready to go. It's like, well, i got to go to work in the morning. It's almost 10 o'clock. We don't want to go. We love this, right? So all week long, they prayed for each other. We had a rooted text group, and every single day we had something happening in that rooted text group where they were praying for one another. If somebody had a hardship, they'd say, look, I need prayer, and we'd all pray for them. And then by the time we got back together on Tuesday, things had always kind of worked themselves out. So it's, it's amazing the kind of miracles that God showed us um, over this last 10 weeks. The power of prayer, the power of surrender, uh, the power of just giving it all up to him and saying, you know what? I'm not in control. I can't do this by myself. I have a community of brothers and sisters, and I have you, and that's who I'm going to lean on. And this is how this worked this last 10 weeks. So it's been amazing. Um, so for you folks that are thinking about doing the Rooted class, I want to ask you guys uh, this question. What were you expecting before Rooted began? Now that we know kind of how Rooted worked out for you, before that first class, what were you guys expecting? Anyone want to answer that one? So when Vanessa first talked me into doing it, I thought it was just going to be another Bible study. Um, maybe I could go in and learn a few things. Um, the stuff I learned was not just scripture, but it teaches you how to work with people to get through the most complicated things in life. Um, we ran into a situation, what, three weeks in to Rooted. Our car was broken into out in the parking lot at 10 o'clock at night, and that could have been faith shattering, but it wasn't. We had a group of people around us, and we came back the next week, and we embraced everything. And even the fear that you would expect to have through something like that faded away in a matter of weeks instead of hanging on. I, Vanessa had, well, the next week we came back, and I kind of had a little bit of anger in my heart for that happening, and I asked her how she was feeling, and she just surprised me. She, you know, she said, oh, I just gave it all up to God. I'm not worried about it. You know, I mean, is that kind of your exact words or you, there was a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I told him that I actually loved the people that did that to me and that they probably needed it more than I did right now. So, yeah. <laughs> so an amazing answer, um, a Christian answer, the exact answer that you would expect. Uh, there I go in, you know, thinking, with my heart, my worldly heart, boy, I'm angry about this, and she's the one who's affected, and she's thinking with nothing but love, you know, so that's amazing, it's incredible. Anybody else? Yeah, give, it, give her a hand, awesome, both of them. So that's something that could have been definitely soul-crushing and, you know, kind of just, I'll give up on this, Nothing, nothing's being answered, these bad things are happening, but it kind of brought you guys back with extra strength and then lifted us up and blessed us uh, even more, so... Anyone want, else want to ask? Clayton? I'm the king of low expectations. I go into every situation with the lowest expectations just so I'm not let down because I, I struggle with that. But what I truly found through the class was an extension of my family. Every one of these people up here I feel like are my family. Uh, we've prayed together. We've cried together. We've, we've went through the whole gamut of emotions. Um, I do encourage anybody out there who's beginning level, 30 years in, there's something huge for you in this class. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be transformational, and it's going to secure a deeper relationship with you and members of the church, the church, and God himself. It is an amazing experience that I, I, there's, I can't place a value on it high enough to show you how much it will change you and then just allow you to love on people in a new, deeper way. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else kind of want to talk about what you were expecting from Rooted before you started? No? Okay. Blythe, you're killing me. <laughs> okay. Um, so we do quite a few subjects, obviously, through the 10 weeks. Uh, the most important thing, obviously, is we've seen we, we're gathering community. You're learning about Scripture. Um, you're really... You're doing the homework five days a week. Um, 
worship. So you're, every single day you're spending time with God. You're spending time in the rooted courses. You're spending time in the scripture. You're spending time praying. Uh, you're spending time with the Holy Spirit. So it's super important to be doing that every single day. Did anyone have a favorite subject throughout the 10 weeks that they uh, would like to share? Dustin? So out of all the subjects uh, for myself, my favorite subject was actually the bad stuff. It was a subject titled, There is an Enemy. And uh, this subject, to give a little bit of background, I, it highlighted all the bad stuff in the world. The enemy, the enemy lurking in the darkness, the things that are, you know, Satan trying to slip in, and the things that, you know, I think everyone in one way or the other battles on a daily basis. Um... You know, this is, this subject identified the evil influences that we fight in our daily lives, and the best part of the subject was that it, it was constantly a reminder that God always has the right way. You know, that the way through God is, is going to remind you that, you know, you don the armor of God to protect you and battle through those elements and always come out on the top. You know, no matter what challenges you face, whether it's your car getting broken into, you know, unforeseen circumstances that you can look to God for answers and that he can guide you along the way and give you the strength to get through all those tough times. So that was by far my favorite subject. I mean, all the subjects are awesome, but that one, I mean, it, it was dark, it was gloomy. It's, it's almost, you know, right there where you don't even want to think about that stuff and look at yourself and reflect on areas that you can improve. But for me, it was eye opening. You know, it, it opened my eyes to many ways that I could change that I didn't even think about, like things that you know, you live your daily lives every day and you don't even, you don't even stop for a second and think that that's something that you could lean on and lean on God for, for help on improvements. So it was, it was an awesome subject. Thank you, Dustin. Anybody else? I think mine was, uh, <clears throat> like the biggest one that I had a problem with was t probably tithing, you know, letting go of my money, especially when I'm broke. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, well, how am I going to pay my rent if I don't have no, if I give all my money away, right? So, and actually what's funny is I follow her. She was strong enough to start tithing at first. And I'm like, how can you do that? You know, you're just giving it away, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, as I started, I, I'm like, well, here's $2. Well, here's $5, you know. Uh, and actually seeing it come back to us in the blessings that uh, in life that was returned, loosened my grip on my money. Uh I think the blessings that were being held back by not tithing was uh, was probably the biggest loss. And for one, I was I was saying, well, God can't can't bind me out bond me out of this uh, financial problems that I got. Uh, he can't, uh, you know, he can't, he can't. That's all I just kept saying, you know. Uh, but actually, the truth was, is he can. And by seeing the tithing come back around to me, you know, just the fact that I would lose him my grip on that uh, allowed him to kind of work in my life. And I'm actually seeing him come through for me for real, right? Uh, uh, especially through, through the finances. Uh, so far behind, so burdened with taxes, so burdened with mortgage, so burdened with, with just not having enough, you know? Uh, being able to let him work through me, uh, I actually feel the comfort of his hand in my wallet, you know? My favorite subject was money. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, I think my favorite one was on the topic of who God is. It's kind of just like a reminder. I remember the first week I was telling him about it. It was like I've never been a not a morning guy, or at least haven't been for a while. And like I started getting woken up like in the like just early hours, just like real pleasant and at peace. And I woke up this one morning, and it was uh, I was like sleeping on my couch, and there's a big window up facing south, and it was like I remember just looking up through the window, and there was. And I've seen a lot of stars, right, like up in the mountains where you can see, like, the Milky Way, and you're just, like, in wonder of, like, how many stars there are. And it was it was similar to that. And I'm, like, in Windsor of all places, like, how is this possible, <laughs> you know? But I was just, like, sitting there kind of dumbfounded in wonder, and I don't know how long I sat there. But then I, like, came to and looked down, and there was, like, this one tree in the yard that's, like, uplit. And it was before it was blooming and before it had leaves and stuff. And I didn't really understand it for a while, but it was, like, at peace and... I had to ask a few people, like, what it meant. Like, what's the meaning of this? And it was like, who God is? He's like, he's the same God that, like, painted the heavens, and he still chose to come down into, like, this 
this barren little tree and wanted to illuminate it and, you know, bring it back to life. And it was like, wow, you, you know, he cares. He's, he's that big, but he works in stuff that's that small and chooses to come into like our own little hearts. Thank you, David. Anybody else? Favorite subject? All right. <laughs> um, mine was the same as what Davy said, was week two, who is God. Um, when I think it was the first or second day in the book, it actually broke down what God did in the beginning. And then uh, during that time, like, like I said, I was feeling worthless in the beginning. And there was a little story in there that said that he did all of this, and then he took the time to create each and every one of us. And it just, with that week, it opened my eyes to realize that um, I was put here for a reason. And even though I may not understand it, I don't have to. I just have to abide by what he needs me to do. So, so yeah. Thank you, Vanessa. Yeah, I would love to keep you guys up here all day long, but we do have second service. So um, I want to say thank you to all of you. I love you. You guys have blessed me tremendously over the last 10 weeks. You have helped me grow as a, as a person in, in Christ and, and in community. Um, so thank you very much. There's been tears and there's been fear and there's been anxieties and there's been all kinds of stuff that we go through every single day and we were able to conquer it together uh, and with Christ's help. So. I want to say thank you. I love you guys. Um, give them a hand. So this is not complicated. You guys can see it's not academic. It's about people being real, being safe, and surrendering, right? So you don't have to know the Bible to do this. Um, you just have to come and surrender. And people with courage can do that. And you can grow tremendously. You'll find things in your heart and with God that you never knew were there. Okay, um, You're going to cry, you're going to be angry, you're going to be happy, but you're going to find peace, you're going to find freedom. Um, it's going to take a commitment. Above all, it's going to take surrender. So if you think you can't make the commitment, maybe next time you will. So I, I'd like to ask you guys to pray about doing the next Rooted series. It's going to start on August 6th. That's a Monday. It's going to go for 10 weeks. There's a sign-up out in the foray right now. So if you guys can get out there and sign up, we are going to do that in a couple months, so um, it's going to be awesome. Um, so I want you guys, if you have your Bibles, i got enough time to do this, uh, turn to John 13, 34. So I'm going to give you guys time to turn there because I think it's, it's special. So Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. So the last command he gives us is to love one another. It doesn't seem difficult. We know it is hard, though. But he's asking us to love each other. And this is what we've seen in the last 10 weeks, love. Love heals everything. It conquers all there's nothing that you can't do without love. And love is an amazing thing, and that's why Jesus told us to love one another. It's a simple solution, okay? I'm going to read a passage out of uh, Renovation of the Heart by Dallas Willard. Um, I found this this week, and it really, uh, it's about spiritual formation, but most likely community. Because who in here thinks they can do this thing by themselves? I'd like to know, yep, nobody. I didn't think so, so... Um, if you do think that, you're wrong. I thought that for a long time. I was wrong. Um, and uh, it takes community. It, take, it takes Christ. You can't do it by yourself. So I'm going to read this. We're going to pray, and I'm going to dismiss you, and I think I'll make Abe happy. So, <laughs> Spiritual formation, good or bad, is always profoundly social. You cannot keep it to yourself. Anyone who thinks of it as a merely private matter has misunderstood it. Anyone who says it's just between me and God or what I do is my business has misunderstood God as well as me. Strictly speaking, there is nothing just between me and God. For all that is between me and God affects who I am, and that in turn 
modifies my relationship to everyone around me. My relationship to others also modifies me and deeply affects my relationship to God. Hence, those relationships must be transformed if I am to be transformed, right? So if you want to be transformed, you need to transform your relationships. Your relationship with God, your relationship with your church, your relationship with your family, okay? So I'm going to pray us out, and we'll dismiss you. You guys give them another hand because it took a massive amount of courage to get up here. Thank you, guys.